Hey everybody, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Standard ammunition test day. Not sure when I post these because I work on them when I have time, but we've got another load from Pine Valley Munitions to run through our ringer today. They contacted us and asked if we would check this out. This is their 168 grain match round. It's an OTM. We'll throw him on the table and see what we have in store today. For our 308 testing, we brought four barrel lengths out today, a 12 and a half inch, a 16 inch gas gun, a 16 inch bolt gun, and a 22 inch bolt gun. We've got our digital chronograph at about 10 to 12 feet. It's 50, maybe 55 degrees outside overcast today. It's December. It was a good day to come out and try to get stuff done. <laughs> After we're done with our velocity and basic function checks, we'll run our accuracy probably out to 200 yards, and then we're gonna test these in gel as Pine Valley asked us to. We'll start with our shortest barrel length. It's our 12 and a half inch SBR. It's a Palmetto State Armory Gen 2 upper, one in 10 twist stainless steel barrel, JMAC Customs LAF for maximum annoyance at the range. Does a really good job at reducing recoil. Got the Radeon ambidextrous charging handle, Pelmo State Armory single stage custom drop in trigger. Got the Battle Arms ambidextrous safety selectors as well. Good function and good velocity for a 168 grain. We'll go to the 16 inch now. Now our 16 inch semi-auto. This is another Palmetto State Armory build. One in 10 twist barrel. Yankee, Yankee Hill, three port muzzle brake. Rocking the primary arms. I think four to, or three to 18 power. Silver series scope. Very nice, very clear. Not bad. Now our 16 inch bolt gun. This is a CZ 557 Urban Counter Sniper. One in 10 twist, really heavy barrel. This is like a 10 pound gun. Got the carbon fiber manor stock on here. Vortex scope. Very nice little setup. There we go. The magazines seated all the way in there, you know. Lay jam. Didn't run run the bolt for not fast enough forward. Got one more in there. And finally, our workhorse. This is our 22 inch TC Compass. I have three of these guns. I've been very pleased with them. If you're looking for a very budget friendly bolt gun, these are hard to argue, especially if you want a threaded barrel. Just watch out that it has a good thread job on it, or you might have to pay a visit to the gunsmith to have them square up the shoulder so that you get good alignment with your suppressor. Not sold on the rotary magazines, but you can buy more of them in their magazine, so it's a little easier to change than an internal fed magazine. 
You can put an Oryx chassis on these guys on these short actions, so that's cool. Help if I turn the magnification down. I don't need it set to six. Got four in there, so I gotta get six more. One, a two, a three, a four. I got brass flying everywhere. No brass trolls, you can't have it. Now we'll go to the accuracy portion and we'll shoot some ballistic gel. Here is our 16 inch CZ557 at 200 yards. This was the first group. This was the second down here. This is 1.59 inches and 1.86 inches again at 200 yards. I would say that's a pretty good group at least for my skill set. Minimal to no wind, no bright sun shining in the scope today. I'm gonna say I'm really pleased with that. I'm very happy with these results. There is no wind today. It's about 40 degrees, kind of chilly, but not too bad. This is our 16 inch with the 16 power, 2.05 inches that is with the suppressor mounted. The better over here though, 1.16 inches, our TC compass with the 22 inch barrel. Again, with the can, I need to bring the scope up a bit because I was aiming way up here but with that point of impact shift with that can on there because it's so heavy that's why we're way down there but 1.16 inches I think I found a low that that gun likes at 200 yards very impressive here are our results from our 16 inch at 100 yards with our suppressor 1.11 inches 0.97 inches and 0.86 inches no wind outside today it's about 32 33 degrees we got some snow and rain over the last couple of days overcast but it's a pretty good day for shooting i can see the target pretty clearly not having to rush anything we'll see how these groups change over going to the 22 inch or using no suppressor grabbed a few more groups of the 168 grain match at 100 yards 1.01 inches from our tc compass no suppressor no suppressor here on the CZ, 0.79 inches. And another group from the TC at 1.01 inches. Pretty consistent results. We have good numbers from 100 and 200 yards. It's about 30 degrees outside. We got some snow and rain the last couple of days, but there is no wind today. Really calm day. I think a good day overcast for shooting. So there you have it. All right, time to make that jello slap. Got some six by six by 16. 10% FBI blocks on our table there from Clear Ballistics Gel. We've got all of our cameras and accessories going. If we don't get a velocity reading, we do have our averages. It's about 40 degrees outside today, pretty, pretty nippy. We'll take a shot from the 12 and a half inch, then the 16 inch. I have a feeling based on this round's designation, we're gonna get tumbling, and then hopefully if we get fast enough, we should see some fragmentation. And hopefully I can hit where I need to. Twenty-two Let me go reposition the block because they jump around when there's a lot of energy being thrown at them.
All right, on to our 16 inch. Sorry, that took me a minute. I had to change a lot of camera batteries. <laughs> that block sure does jump with 308. We'll go check out and see what we did before we go to the 22 inch. Well, folks, I think that's what happens sometimes when I assume. I figured because this was an open tip bullet that we would have a lot of tumbling and no fragmentation from the shortest barrel length, but this wound track right here in the foreground is the 12 and a half inch. We have some fragmentation starting around the, it was at nine to 12 inch mark. You can see a piece dive down there. There's another piece at the 13 inch mark at the 15 there is more of the jacket and then all the way out to the 21 inch mark is our lead core we'll dig that out in a second now the channel behind i'll do a i'll flip it over here in a second we have a little bit of shorter neck there you can see fragmentation starting off at about the three inch mark very similar disruption going on there and we get our bullet all the way out to right around the 20 inch mark and there's a lot more of it there a lot very large chunk of it we'll definitely get these out but i was expecting a tumbling round and i'm impressed even out of the 12 and a half inch if you uh had to use that in a home defense situation against a naked person anyways without any barriers wow here is a top-down shot. I keep trying to say visualization. I'm on, I'm on about take eight, so we'll just say top-down shot. The 12 and a half inch and R16. Very impressive wound channels. That bugger right there is the 16 inch. We'll get our forceps, AKA my needle nose pliers and dig them suckers out in a second. But I, very impressive. That 22 inch, huh, I wonder what that's gonna do. I probably should get a fresh block for that. Here is the 12 and a half inch largest recovered pieces. As you can see, that jacket puked the core out there. There is our 16 inch. Look at that. That's impressive. I wouldn't want to get hit with one of those. Let's get on to the 22 inch. And now our long and strong, the 22 inch maximum velocity, maximum expansion and ballistic performance, at least in theory anyways. Mm -hmm. Kinda weird. Here we go, right in the center of the block. I see a big mess down there in the gel. Let's go take a look. Very impressive out of the 22 inch. We got about what, an inch and a half neck there. This block's a little cloudy. It's probably on its first remelt, but very good wound track. You can see fragmentation starting early on in the three to three and a half inch mark. I see a little bit of jacket at five. I see a couple wound tracks starting at the 10 inch mark. And then right around the 17 is our recovered bullet. We'll dig that out of there in a second. Looks like we got really good expansion. We'll flip over to a top-down shot so we can look at the wound track from another angle. Here is our top-down shot. Forgive me if the gimbal doesn't want to react. You would think you could bottom some of the motors out and just keep the motion pretty fluid, but it seems to like try to track what you're looking at, but it doesn't do a very good job, at least of what we're using it for. There is our bullet. We'll dig him out of there, but very impressive for what's a match round. Here is the 22 inch. Almost looks like the exact same amount of expansion like the 16 inch. We'll definitely get the macros 
and the numbers off these to see which one came out bigger. But I'm impressed. Well, folks, I'd say Pine Valley Munitions hit a home run with this 168 grain match loading. We had good accuracy at 100 and 200 yards. That's as far as I have out. I may have to talk to a few of my farmer friends and see if we can go, you know, 400, 600 yards someday with some of these loads. Our clear ballistics gel results, we had expansion all the way down to the 12 and a half inch mark, which means if you're shooting, you know, a 20 or 22 inch barrel at a few hundred yards out against game, that this is going to give you good expansion. The sample size for this ammunition is rather small. I think I put 100 rounds through the three different guns that I used, but they have good attention to detail. The brass and components on these rounds look amazing. If you do decide to check some of this out yourself, your 2021 stimulus, if you so choose to use it, is Buffman. As I sign off for today, because my feet are getting cold, even with wool socks, I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters, Pine Valley Munitions, who in full transparency provided this for us to test. And of course, you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.